and they were just as vast over 4,000 years ago when the ancient Britons faced a similar dilemma. They had to move the sarsen stones over a distance of 20 miles. The largest weighed over 40 tons, and to make matters worse, the terrain is rough. It's a mixture of marsh, steep valleys and woodland. How did they manage this difficult task? In the island of West Sumba, Indonesia, they're still using ancient stone moving techniques. They build stone tombs and erect huge standing stones. It's a great communal effort. The stone is laid on a sled and then pulled with vines over wooden rollers. It takes up to 600 people one day to move one of these stones a hundred yards. This method may not have been an option for the ancient Britons. It's estimated that at the time there were only 300,000 people scattered around the entire British Isles. It may have been difficult to gather the necessary manpower for such an operation. But now another theory is gaining headway. In Derbyshire, England, a groundbreaking experiment is in the works. A carpenter, neither an archaeologist nor an engineer, thinks he knows how the ancient Britons moved the stones. And he plans to put his theory to the test. So many people have told me I'm talking rubbish. If we could make a good job of it today, it'll certainly give the archaeologists something to think about. His method is based on the power of levers. A man can lift many times his body weight, depending on the length of the lever. First, they position the stone on a giant sled. Using logs as levers, a small team of people can lift the stone, then pivot the levers, walk backwards and push the whole thing forwards, just like rowing. But will it work? A team of volunteers gather to act as stone rowers. Right, we need, we need some bodies now. They don't have a genuine megalith handy, so instead they use a massive concrete block weighing 12 tonnes, about the weight of one of the lintels at Stonehenge. Yeah, when I saw it this morning, I thought, grief, how the f*** going to move it? I hope Gordon's got all his calculations done right. Even with the help of some 21st century technology, getting the massive block off the truck and into position is taking more time than they'd planned. About an hour behind already. <laughs> All face downhill. All face. Right, when you're ready, this side first slightly, press down. <laughs> this side, down. The technique down. seems simple, but it's harder than it looks. Down. All the way down. Right, down, 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 down. There we go. Not working, is it? <laughs> the problem is that the levers are sliding under the stone and jamming against the ground. It calls for a technical modification. They cut notches in the ends of the logs in the hope of stopping them slipping. Ready? One, two, three, lift. Right down to knee height. Right, while well, you've got it there, just come step forward one pace. Good. It's moving! Yeah. Well done, Jordan. Absolutely. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pull a little marker down, see how far we get, I think. It won't be far, but we can measure that. Oh, we're going again? Yeah. Right. Get your weight to the end of the levers. Walk forward. Come on. Stop. Rest it. <laughs> and the total distance covered? 38 inches. Next time, we'll do that in 15 minutes, instead of all day messing about. <laughs> and they do. They then release the levers all together. They recruit more people so they can add an extra four levers on each side. 
Everybody ready? Raise! Okay, roll! Come on! Come on, guys! And release. Raise! Roll! Come on, guys! Okay. In a matter of minutes, they seem to have hit on the Neolithic technique. They're operating like a well-oiled Stone Age machine. And release. The result is astonishing. OK, let's have another measurement. So how far is that, Simon? Uh, 23 foot 7. Steps. Wow, 23 feet 7, guys! Brilliant! It's estimated that using this method, it would have taken 32 people at least three months to move a stone of this size 20 miles to Stonehenge. Although it may solve one problem, it introduces another. How were the ancient builders able to erect the stones and raise the giant lintels that rest on top? Pretty strong as a structure. We're trying to emulate that. Even with the help of some 21st century technology, it's difficult to manoeuvre the replica stones into position. But how did the ancient Britons get their 12-ton lintels on top of the 13-foot uprights? The answer may lie once again with levers and Gordon pipes. We're not far off level. We're near enough to be safe. Once we go at level that way and that way, it's safe as ours is. He demonstrates that the technique could have been used not just to move the stones, but also to raise them. How much do we need? It's about four times whatever. Three, three, Has three, got two, tape measure? Yeah, it might just about it. The plan is to raise the concrete block a few inches using levers and add logs underneath. They lever it up again and add more logs at right angles to create a platform. Then they repeat the process. The team of volunteers raises the block two feet off the ground. Then they hit a problem. The wooden levers are now too high in the air to reach. They bring in scaffolding towers to stand on. Neolithic builders probably used wooden platforms on either side. After just one hour, the team have raised the lintel almost three feet. Well done, ladies and lads. But with no sarsens to lift it onto, they've proved the point and call it a day. But the Neolithic builders would have continued. Once the lintel was raised level with the top of the sarsens, they levered it across and locked it into position. 